shooting for today? You know what I'm saying? Who's that brand we're shooting for? You know what I'm talking about, Nike. You know what I'm saying? But you can't say that in the vlog, man. Bro, you remember I'm black. Are <laughs> <laughs> you? So we are in uh, Venetia right now, and so we're at this little little pier thing, and uh, hopefully get some shots, you know, with the water. Basically, I'm gonna just have you sit, you know, kind of close to that rock. Okay. You know I'm black. <laughs> I can't be close to water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I'm used to shooting with a 50, that's just my standard, but I'm going to make it a challenge for me today and strictly shoot with the 85, so I'm going to take the 50 off the top of this and then let's shoot with the 85 for the whole day. If I can't, you know, maybe I'll switch back, but I'm going to make it my best effort to try to shoot with the 50 only. Let's get it. You said you're ugly. Alright, let's get to work. Man, get my coffee. It's just a stick. You're angry. I'm not angry, that's just a stick, bro. <laughs> so, what's happening is, the sun is, oh my God, there's a lot of seagulls. Really harsh light coming from the back side of his head and it's leaving a lot of shadow on the other side of his face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and throw some fill flash on him uh, just to even it out and see, you know, to kind of regain all that shadow detail that was lost in there. So, trust the flash on the 5D. That's a lot of birds. I don't think I've ever seen that type of bird either. What kind of bird is this? Leave in the comments down below. Hey, he's raw, look at him. What kind of bird is this? It like an albino. It, it might be an albino pigeon or I think we're just uneducated on birds, dude. All right, guys, so we're back home from the shoot. Uh, had a fun time out there with Jesse. It was a little too bright out there, so we stuck to all those shaded areas, but nonetheless, you guys, it was pretty fun. Uh, but right now, I'm gonna take a moment to go ahead and go over some of the mail that I got in. I had some people reach out to me the last couple weeks and they sent me some stuff over it, so now I'm gonna open them up in front of the camera just for you guys. So the first one right here is from Richard A. Muster. So there's a note inside of here as well. Let me go ahead and read this. Bam. <clears throat> hey man, hope this package finds you well. I enjoy watching your videos. They inspire me to go out and shoot film. Just wanted to send you some cool stuff as a thank you for you and your channel. Included in the package should be a small photo book of some pics I've taken, a keychain I made from an old film roll, and some custom decals I designed myself, uh, the ones in the envelope I made specifically for you to use for yourself or give them out. Hope you enjoy, Richard M, or at Killa Skis on Instagram. So as you guys see there, Killer Skis, follow him on Instagram. Now, when I first got the package, I completely forgot that he was gonna be sending stuff over. I didn't know what it was. And so when I, when I opened it up, I was just like, holy crap, that is a lot of stuff. So the first thing that really popped out to me was this killer keychain. Just look at it, y'all, Kodak gold keychain. This thing is definitely coming onto my keys everywhere I go. This is fucking dope. Honestly, when I got this, I was like, damn. This is dope as shit, so I'm about to attach it to my keychain in a minute. He also sent over some instructions on how to apply the decals. And you know, when I I didn't expect you know much from me. I never really usually expect a lot, but man, Richard went all out and he made King Japes. Oh shit, it's upside down. King Japes decals, little stickers. So he gave me a couple in black, and he also made some in white as well, which is you know kind of hard to see. Uh, in this lighting situation, but that is a fat stack of decals, and that's crazy. He said he designed these himself, and so that's awesome. Also, we got some skulls as well, and 
two rolls. Uh, it just says film is not dead, which is dope as hell too. I'm putting this on my car. <laughs> and last but not least, probably one of the coolest aspects of what he sent me was this photo book. And so Richard M made this himself. It's called, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it a steady? I don't know. Leave in the comments what you guys think. But it's a series of photos he took. And look at this one. The cool thing about all of these photos is that he uses the A6000, which is the exact camera I use for my portrait work. Uh, of course, his style is a little different, but it's amazing to see, you know, some of the images that he created with the A6000. Uh, he also used a bunch of, uh, well, I think it was vintage glass. Uh, for example, this one was with a, okay, that was with a Sony 51.8. There's a couple of them here that has a uh, Minolta. So here's a Minolta 50 millimeter 3.5. So he took that shot with that lens. And you know, a lot of this stuff is amazing, especially if you go towards the back and you see some of that landscape stuff. It's beautiful, man. So what is this? Gate Pass, Tucson, Arizona. So Richard M, thank you so much for all of this stuff. Definitely gonna put all those decals and stickers into use. I'm going crazy about them, actually. I have two on my sticker cup and uh, I'm about to put one on my car. So Richard M, Killer Skis on Instagram, thank you so much. Now, the next package was actually sent over by somebody who sent me something before. Um, a buddy of mine named John Wilkinson again. And so we kind of just go back and forth with stuff. Uh, he sent me the Olympus stuff and I sent him something as well. And so, you know, he's just a good friend and, and he supports the channel and contributes to it all the time. And so I got another package from him for you guys. John always packs you know his stuff in the best stuff so you know there's really no worries about it coming damaged uh, here's a little note he attached jonathan there are two lenses in this box the chiron never heard of that brand before looks like a nikon mount it's a donation for a channel like i said you guys john is awesome man <laughs> the canon lens is a loaner for you to play with i want it back when you're done i've also got a 35 fd i can loan you when you send the twin when you send this back he sent me two lenses one of them is to play with and one of them is to keep which is awesome so i still haven't opened it yet so you know i'm as just, i'm as surprised and clueless as you guys are so this one is the chiron lens as it says on top and yeah this is definitely a nikon mount all right, let's see what we got here. So first of all, it's a telephoto looking lens. Here's the front and let's take the cap off. Beautiful front lens element. And the next thing he sent me was inside of this little pouch. Now, this is a loaner he said he sent to over to me just to try out and use. I'm, ex I'm curious to see what it is because John is really spontaneous sometimes. <laughs> so here we go. So it's a Canon FD lens, top cap lens hood wow that's a really nice lens hood i need to get one for my for my canon awesome look at that canon 50 millimeter 1.4 now john talks about his a6300 and he has a i think it's like a he has a metabones adapter i think so it's canon fd to sony nex or e-mount and so he adapts a bunch of his vintage canon fd glass onto his a6300 and so i have an adapter just like that so i'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot and you know see how this lens goes and see how it performs thank you john for sending it over again man uh, i'm gonna use this for my next portrait shoot next week so let's see how it goes let's see all right so that's just about it for mail time once again thank you john and also thank you richard m for the stuff you sent over absolutely amazing i really enjoyed the keychain all right so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the meat of this video uh, for those of you guys who are here you guys are probably watching because the title says how to replace light seals or how to fix light seals right something along the lines of that um and so and so here's how the story goes okay so the other day i was out and about went to the thrift shop and copped this canon ql 17 g3 from the thrift store uh the only problem that i see with it is that there's a slight dent in the filter ring right over here but it's not a big issue all shutter speeds work uh copped it for 14 bucks the only other thing about this camera was that if you look right up at the back right back here look at all of that gunk so these light seals need a heavy heavy replacement all right and so that's the project that i'm going to do today i'm going to show you guys how to replace light seals now it's fairly easy and the method i use is something that i've seen before and it's probably not the professional way to do it uh, by all means i'm not a professional light seal replacer or a film camera repairsman but you know, I do my best to get my gear up to standard in order for it to function and work properly. So my method doesn't require a lot of things. It actually only requires 
uh, maybe around like two things. The first thing you need is an X-Acto knife. Now, this X-Acto knife can be bought at Walmart, Walgreens, any drugstore uh, or corner store pretty much will sell an X-Acto knife. If you guys can't get your hands on one of these, don't feel discouraged, you can use a regular knife or some scissors. I just find the X-Acto knife to be a little bit more precise, especially when you have to cut really small thin strips. And the second thing you're gonna need is some of this foam right here. Now, this is peel and stick foam sheets. Uh, I got this from a local store, uh, a local arts and crafts store. It's kind of like a Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Uh, it was a pack of five for, uh, I think, three bucks. So not expensive at all. So you can replace your light seals for under 10 bucks. So that's it, you guys. That's all you need. You need a pack of peel and stick foam sheets and you need X-Acto knife. And of course, you're gonna need, obviously, the camera of choice that you need to replace. So now this works for SLRs, it works for rangefinders in some situations like this one. Uh, pony shoots generally don't really have light seals. Uh, on specific models, some of them do, but you know, pony shoots are generally just, they just have like light barriers built in. So yeah, so let's go ahead and bring you guys down and let's dive straight into it. I'll make sure to go step by step. All right, first step we need to do is, let me take this off really quick. The first step we need to do is go ahead and clean the back side of the camera so if your camera already has deteriorated stuff like this uh, let me pull it up just a little bit closer you want to go ahead and clean that off uh, some people will you know tell you to purposely leave it on there because it acts almost like a like a glue that you can just use uh, to put the new foam on but uh, I generally will do that to this side but for the part that it degrades on I take it off so first step for this one is to clean it up also, a quick tip before we start, um, I suggest getting some scotch tape. Uh, just go ahead, if you have a camera like this where there's no shutter curtain, uh, just grab some scotch tape and cover it up just so that none of this uh, nasty gooey stuff will get inside. Oh my God, I'm a horrible, horrible person when it comes to scotch tape. All right, so now that's covered, uh, that little area up there is safe. You can go ahead and start cleaning this off with a napkin. That's all I really use, so just go down here. As you guys see, this stuff comes off like butter. Um, it's pretty, pretty dang disgusting. I'd say use alcohol as well. Uh, alcohol is a great method to get rid of some of this stuff. So now once you got that base part off, uh, like I said, you can use rubbing alcohol, uh, but another way to do it is to just go ahead and grab you some Clorox disinfectant, Clorox disinfectant wipes. So let me go grab that really quick. Clorox disinfectant wipes, just take it, um, go to the area that needs to be treated, and then just, you know, start scraping away and start getting all that stuff off. You know, the more you get off, the better. Just be careful not to be a dumbass like I am right now. Okay, that looks much better than before. So, now that you have that done, I'll just go ahead and wipe this surface down really quick. The next part is easy, so <clears throat> you can go ahead and leave that over here, <clears throat> you know, kind of just to dry up. But the next part is to grab the foam sheets and your X-Acto knife as well. Just so be careful with the X-Acto knife, you guys. If you are, you know, younger than, I don't know what the recommended age for this is, but if you're younger, I uh, definitely recommend having a parent or adult help you out just so you don't, you know, under parent parental supervision. So now that you have your foam sheet out, you want to make a measurement. You want to measure how big this is right here and the distance from left to right. Now, an easy way to do it is either go like that, but you can actually get a ruler or a, um, a tape measure and estimate. I'm kind of just going to go by eye because I kind of, I can kind of already, you know, tell how long this is going to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and do so. So what you're going to do is take that X-Acto knife. If you have plastic on it, make sure to take it off. And you're just going to go ahead with the X-Acto knife and you're going to cut out an estimate on how big you think that light seal is. All right, with that X-Acto knife, you come down. Just like that, nice and easy. Once you're done cutting, you know, make a slit incision here, and then just go ahead and take it off. So that's just about the right size for this one. And then all you do simply, like I said, leaving some of that gunk on the other side uh, is might be beneficial. You don't necessarily want to leave it on this side, but on that side is fine. You peel it off with the adhesive side down, and then you apply your light seal. All 
All right, I kind of underestimated there, so I'm just gonna cut out another little strip. All right, now once you do that, same thing, you know, just go over here and just stick it on. Okay, and that's it. <clears throat> that's how you replace a light seal. As you guys can see there, you know, it's nice and intact. And so that's it, just go ahead, close the back door up again, lock it shut, and you're good to go. That's pretty much how you replace a light seal. Again, this is not a professional method whatsoever. This is just what I do to my cameras when I need to replace the light seals for it. That's the easy and cheap way to do it. Uh, you can also do it on the SLR as well. If you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, feel free to go ahead and send it over to a shop. They'll go ahead and take care of your camera 100%. They are professional, unlike I am. And so, you know, they'll have different methods on doing it. But I've used this method multiple times before on cameras that needed light seal replaces, and it works perfectly just fine. And so that's how to replace the light seal, you guys. Quick, easy, simple for under 10 bucks. All right, you guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have any questions, comments, or if you guys have anything you could suggest to us, uh, definitely leave in the comments down below what you guys think. I'm gonna try to respond to you guys within the first you know, couple hours of that comment being posted. Other than that, you guys, thank you for tuning in to another King J's video. I'm about to go shoot the Canon uh, QL17 G3. I still think it's a really weird name for a camera, but uh, nonetheless, it's awesome, man, so far. so. You guys will see a lot more from this camera in the future, but just want to say again, thank you guys for tuning in to another video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Pow! Oh, no, 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 no. You guys thought I'd forget. Minolta game. <laughs>